Raise My Sword is the culmination of the 2019 Hard Rock meta. Dubbed Sotarx's 1000pp project, it was meant to be both extremely difficult but also very farmable, and it really should have succeeded. But through a series of events following the map's ranking, it would never end up living up to the farming utopia that it was supposed to be. But as the map lost this status, it would gain a new one, as a flowing behemoth that to this day has only been conquered by a few. This is the history of Raise My Sword. But before the video starts, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. It's a new year, and it should be a new you, and for 98% of you, Manscaped is the perfect way to do that. In their Perfect Package 4.0, you get the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is a waterproof cordless razor made to reduce nicks and cuts. It also means that you can use it in the shower for a super easy cleanup. In every way, it's super premium, with this really nice charger and these LEDs that show how much juice you still have left. Pressing this button three times also enables a travel lock so it won't turn on your bag. The razor isn't the only thing in the box either, with the included crop preserver, ball deodorant, and crop reviver. Finally, there's the magic mat for all the uh, extras, and the shed travel bag and the anti-chafing briefs. Start the year off right with Manscaped and get 20% off with my promo code. Now back to the video. In 2018, the Flowam Farm meta would reach its high point, with Idki's 981pp record on Cry Thunder that also repelled him to the number one spot. The highest level of the game had been shifting more and more towards these kind of plays, and with just how close Idki's play was to 1000pp, it seemed like there was definitely a possibility of the pinnacle of Osu achievements being set within that year. Sotarx had mapped Cry Thunder, and so it seemed like if anybody could make a map that was a doable 1000pp, it would be him. And he got to it pretty quickly. When less than a month after Eidke's Cry Thunder play, he would upload Raise My Sword. The project quickly became both one of Osu's most hyped and hated maps, both because of basically the same reason. And that was that it was a doable 1k. Many thought that because it was so obviously mapped to do that, that if the 1000 PP play actually happened on it, it would just be lame. But on the other hand, an insane amount of excitement built up over the possibility that we could see history made on the map. To make a map capable of giving such high PP values, a few things had to be out of the ordinary. One of these was just how easy the first 50% is. Outside of like one super spaced opening stream and a single other diff spike, it's mapped like a 6 star map. As it progresses, it does consistently get more difficult though, and by the last 50% it's fairly difficult with frequent diff spikes. And specifically, the end of the map has these two long space streams that give the map the majority of its PP. This structure is reminiscent of how a lot of jump bar maps work, which sort of makes sense with Sotox's history. Cry Thunder had been the same way, and in that case, it had clearly worked out really well. The thing about these diff spikes is that they did make the map way more RNG based than something like Uda, since instead of consistency and flow aim, it was really just testing flow. The map would, like most Sotox maps, be pushed through rank really quickly. And almost immediately after the ranking of the map, a landmark play would be set. One that would define most of the others to come after it. And that was Umbre's tragic choke on it. The fact that he hit every one of the diff spikes only to miss on the sliders before the end and then the last circle of the map made it seem like a super doable score. Especially since at this time, Umbre was number 34, and with this play he'd skipped 800 and went straight to 900, getting one of the highest PP plays in the game. It seemed like if someone like Idki played the map, it could really happen. But for a while there'd be an active effort on Idki's part not to play the map. But a month later, he would go at it and show what he could do. And it was sort of disappointing. An FC was definitely possible, but his accuracy said a lot more than his miscount. It had been able to get 99.6 on Cry Thunder, but on Raise My Sword, he'd failed to break 99. And spoiler, to this day, only four players have broken 99% on the map with or without Hard Rock. This is because the timing is questionable to say the least. When you get to OD10, these tiny inconsistencies make a massive difference. 
And just going through 10 seconds of the song here, the map goes from 184.5 to 181 to 185. This is the first of the big problems with the 1000 PP dream, but the second would come just a month later in the form of a PP change. If the act problem wasn't enough, then this would have killed it anyways. Because the general PP rebalance would make the map worth only 960 for the Hard Rock SS. Hidden Hard Rock was still technically possible, but those aforementioned super intense diff spikes would make it much much harder than it had any right to be. Despite this, the map would remain fairly popular. There were FCs from Cappy and Varvalian, as well as a few others, but it wasn't quite the honesty level farming extravaganza that people were expecting. Umbrae's hard rock run was still by far the best, even though people like Fiery were putting in hundreds of attempts. But this would all change when, on February 25th, BTMC would set one of Osu's most iconic plays. Oh my god! As one of Osu's biggest personalities, his play would skyrocket the map from extremely famous to one of the most talked about ever, spawning infinite memes and giving BTMC a much sought after number one score. But this wouldn't last long, because Fiery's grind on the map was about to pay off. By this point he had almost 500 attempts and multiple chokes within the last 500 combo, but he'd just keep grinding for the play, and eventually it'd come. His reaction really says everything about how much effort he put into getting the play. The craziest part about this play has to be the accuracy, getting the best act on the map with Hard Rock. It was almost the end all be all of scores on the map, since unless someone wanted to grind it as much as he did, matching that accuracy would be exceptionally difficult. And as time passed, it became more and more obvious how impressive the score was, since over two years later, only one person would be able to match his act. And that was with no mod. Not a single person would even exceed it. And interestingly enough, only one other person would actually FC the map with Hard Rock, and that was Emrek with his still very impressive 98.5% FC. But then, everything would change in January of 2022, when Vaxe would just seem to snap, setting out on one of the most absurd Hard Rock plays in the game. A 99.6% FC. Yeah, that's 6% higher than any player, Hard Rock or not, had gotten on the map. He did it so casually as well. It's a play that shows off an unmatched level of skill on flow aim, and it's kind of set in motion Vaxxay's recent pop off. This play is pretty much where the map stands today, with 4 Hard Rock FCs and almost a full leaderboard of Nomad FCs. It's interesting to see how the map never really became honestly level farming juggernaut people sort of expected it to be. It's also funny to see how his plan is a 1000 PP project. And now, despite having many plays over 1000 PP, no one has even gotten a play on the map that would have been worth 1k before it was nerfed. In a lot of ways though, this development has actually made the map a whole lot more interesting, with a Hard Rock FC proving to be a landmark flow aim score. And although the map seemed to fall out of public favor in 2020, Vaxe and Emrex's recent FCs have propelled it back into the spotlight, meaning we'll probably be seeing a lot more from it pretty soon. And I think that's pretty cool.